Right, so this is my latest fiasco. I bought this secondhand and the guy told me that it didn't work, so I thought I'd give it a go anyway. It's universal audio interface and I'm in Australia and I got a power adapter sent to me with it. Uh, and looking on the back, I notice that it says, I can't really see it over there. Yes. 12 volt center positive. Looking at the power supply that he gave me with it. And it's 25 volt. So there's the first problem. It's also center positive, so that's correct. That means the center pin of the of the power supply lead is the positive one. The outsides are negative. Um, it's a US adapter. So to test what it was actually outputting, I just bent the pins and it just goes straight into a, an Australian wall socket. Before you do that, you have to check that it actually says on the back that it can work between 110 volts and 240. So you won't blow it up. So that's how I did that. Just bent the pins, go straight into an Australian socket. But um, I measured it, it's 25.2 volts. So I'd say that they've plugged that into here, gotten confused with their power adapters and blown it up. So we're going to open it up and see what's gone wrong. I've put a normal adapter on it, 12 volt one, and it still won't fire up. So let's pull it apart and see what sort of mayhem is in store for us. So it's always been my belief that a good working piece of audio gear should smell like a nice, freshly washed and ironed shirt or something fresh out of the tumble dryer, not like a pair of dirty old socks. So I give it the sniff test. Ugh. Something's definitely wrong inside there. Trust your nose. If something smells wrong, probably is. So I've undone all the screws on the back, taken the knob off the top, which I might not have needed to do, but I've got my box of screws and taken all the washers and all the screws off the back. And let's open it up and see what's going on inside there. Right, so this is the insides. Undo those screws. There's a ribbon cable, which you can pop out which is the one that attaches to the top panel. And now that I've got that out of the way, I've undone the main screws on the board and then I can undo these supports here, which allow me to get access to the bottom side of the board so I can see what's going on here underneath. Okay, so after a little bit of exploring, let me show you what I did. This is the power circuit and power comes in 12 volt. I um, measured across, there's usually a surface mount capacity here, which was a 35 volt, 100 microfarad. I tested across that and it looked short circuit. So I thought maybe it had burnt out short circuit, which is unlikely for a capacitor to do. So I pulled it out of circuit, unsoldered it and put a standard electrolytic in measured across the pads while I had it apart and it was still short circuit. So that wasn't the problem. Then I started looking around the circuit. This is a voltage regulator and it has output, input and ground. All those pins were shorted together. So that made me think, okay, something else is going on here. I looked around here and you can see there's a diode. This big thing here is a shot key diode. Um, that could have been faulty. I measured across that and it was a direct short. So I lifted one side of it just by unsoldering one side. And a good way to do that is just to add some solder to it, then suck it all off and that gets all the solder off with it. Then I sort of carefully pried it up to get access to the pins and measured it. And one way it was um, high resistance, and the other way showing a value of about 0.2 or something, which is correct for a shot key. So it wasn't that. So then I moved on. There's a little barrier diode here, which was a little surface mount diode, this little puppy here, which is called an XK96A. Uh, I lifted one leg of that, measured that, and it was short circuit both ways. So that was definitely faulty. So yeah, that someone's plugged in the wrong power or the wrong polarity or something and blown that. So I just went and got a standard 100 volt diode, put it across there, 
And um, with the cathode, so the negative side facing inwards and positive side outwards, and put that in circuit. Um, and then plug the power in, turn it on, 12 volts. And then now when I measure it, the test points here, they're all showing the correct voltages. So I have 11 volt, 12s, uh, 12, 3, 5, and so forth. They're all working and I heard the relays click on. In fact, I'll show you. Turn this off. Turn it back on again. Hear the relays click. So that seems to be working. Let's connect everything else up and see how it goes. All right. It's back together. Let's do a reset on it. So apparently the way you do a reset is you hold down, it's gonna be tricky, you hold down this, these two buttons and the preamp at the same time and turn it on. So um, I'll do that and we'll see if it comes on. So this is after the reset. Yes, it's working. You might see it flashing because it's um, recording on my phone, but these are solidly lit. It says monitor. And um, when I did the reset, all the lights came on, so they're all working. So I think we've got it sorted. Let's connect it. Here it is all back in situation, working. Everything's good. I've ordered a new shot key diode for the one that I replaced and a new surface mount capacitor as well because I always like to put things back to original um, components but anyway that was a good quick fix so if yours isn't working check that stuff three weeks later I finally have the parts I need to fix the UAD satellite interface properly now, you remember in the last bit, I showed you that I used a diode to get it going. Well, I found out it's actually not a normal diode. So let me show you what I've got in here. I have a whole bunch of different types of diodes. Zener, shot key ones, which are there. But actually the one that we need is this thing here. It's actually called a transient voltage suppressor. And the ones that we need are actually 14 volt ones. They have a really strange coding system that you can't identify very easily from the numbers on the bottom. I'll put some links down below to explain it. But basically, I had to look at the picture of the company, the make of it, and then um, I worked out that with, that it was Vishne and I went to their website and then I sifted through reams of paper until I finally found out what the model number referred to. And it's actually the build year. So that was interesting. So this is the, um, the component. SMAJ14CA-E3-61. So that's a transient voltage suppressor. They're actually bidirectional, so there's no markings on them, there's no cathode marked, and they are supposed to stop over voltage either way, going to Earth or from Earth. So because this had the wrong power supply connected, that's what it's blown. The thing with these is they actually blow shorted out which is ridiculous, but that's how it works. So that's why it was shorting out the circuit. We're not getting anything working. So I'm going to open up the satellite and then put this in to circuit, solder it in, and also replace the capacitor at the same time. So that's what it is, TVS, transient voltage suppressor. So open now. These are the parts I'm going to replace. So this capacitor, I'm going to put a proper 100 microfarad surface mount one in. And this is where the TVS needs to go, the transient voltage suppressor. doesn't matter which direction because it's bidirectional, so it protects over voltage either way. But I'll pull that out, put some fresh paste on, put the new component on. Here's the board under my microscope. 
You'll see how ugly it looks, D1 there, but that'll be okay. I'll put some flux on it, put the component on. And then next to it, you see these pads here for the big capacitor, which I'll also put on at the same time. So we'll just put a dab of flux on those, put the component on, solder it in place. Right, so they're in place, capacitor, S uh, transient voltage suppressor. Let's put it back together. Back together again, let's see if it works. Power connected, on. There you go, the relays, and there's our power. All good, so hopefully I never need to open that again. I hope this video has been helpful. If you'd like to donate, thank you very much. That would be amazing. I'll put a link below along with the components that you need to replace if you have an over voltage problem with your Apollo Twin. Thanks for watching.